Hello, good morning or good evening, depending on the time zone. Great to see all of you. So let's wait for one or two minutes before we get started. And uh, I think it's worthwhile for us to do another round of self-introduction. Uh, we'll wait for probably one or two minutes uh, as we have a few new members joining us. It's truly exciting. Okay. Hi, Robang. Hi, everybody. Hi, Giovanni. Are you, are you talking? Yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah, if you want to do the self-introduction now. Yeah, uh, nice to meet everybody. A pleasure to be here. Looking forward to some good learning uh, with some pizza in front of here. And uh, yeah, I'm Giovanni Liotta and I'm um, currently Venture Development Manager at the Scandalari Center at WashU. Uh, I'm passionate about uh, Python, data science, data wrangling, data uh, analytics uh, in different spaces. I'm also the founder of a startup, uh, Sport Dojo. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Giovanni. Uh, so Giovanni and I, we met each other uh, about several months ago. And I had some consultation with him because he is definitely the go-to person, the expert on entrepreneurship. And uh, I would also encourage you, if you're at WashU, you know, affiliate with WashU, uh, I would highly recommend you to meet with uh, Giovanni because he has a lot to offer regarding entrepreneurship and data science. Okay, great to have you. Okay, so um, maybe we can just uh, go around the, uh, I see that uh, Jing Yi, are you here? Do you want to make uh, a self introduction? Hello. Uh, thank you, Professor Ann. Uh, can you hear me? Or yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jin Yi Huang. Uh, I'm a PhD student from the Sport University of Shanghai. My research interest is basically involved the health communication, especially the health content consumption in the social media. Uh, it's really a great pleasure to join you and and have have this opportunity to exchange ideas of all of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, fantastic. So Jin Yi and I, we have been collaborating for a while. Uh, and Jin Yi have taken my uh, application, AI application for health data certificate program, and she learned really well. And now she's working with me on several projects uh, using artificial intelligence and especially generative AI and computer vision. Fantastic. And uh, so that's probably just, we, we just go around the room and make a self introduction. Maybe uh, Yu Yi, you want to uh, get started? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Yu Yi Yang. I'm a first year data science PhD student. I'm also research assistant of Professor M. Nice to meet you. Great. Uh, oh, I, I see Yuku is here. Do, do you want to make a self introduction? Oh, hi. Professor um, An and everyone. So <clears throat> I'm a first year MPA student concentrating in uh, biostatistic and epidemiology. And I was a dentist from Taiwan and I'm really interested in data science and um, computer science and so, so on and so forth. So it's really excited to be here and to hear from your insight. Thank you. Fantastic. Could you help us pronounce your name again? Um, maybe my pronunciation is, is far from right. <laughs> yeah, just Yuku. Yeah, you, you're right. Yuku, you're right. Yuku. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So what a coincidence. You know, Yuku and I, we met uh, on the airplane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... just... just... We that's, sat, uh, we sit next to each other. That's yeah. <laughs> right. We sat next to each other for the entire flight of uh, three hours and 20 minutes. Uh, so, the, no, just before departure, uh, you could introduce himself. I was so surprised. That's a very small world. Uh, okay. And Jing? Oh, hello, everyone. I'm, T I'm Shen Jing. Uh, I'm a teacher from China University of Geosol Science, Beijing. Uh, my research uh, focuses on environmental and health of physical activity. 
I'm very honored to participate in Dr. A's AI study group. I look forward to listening to today's hearing. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you, Jean. Uh, Jean and I, we are long-time collaborators, uh, published, I don't know how many papers. <laughs> Fantastic to have <laughs> yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And uh, Bin Yuan? Uh, uh, okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Bing Yuan. Uh, I'm currently a MPH student, second year, uh, AP and Bio. Uh, I, I've been in the group for, for like half a year. Maybe, oh, maybe, I, yeah, almost of almost a year. And I really learned a lot from the AI interest group. Uh, I'm currently working on a project about uh, the causal inference using the BERT model and uh, I just heard some. Uh, is I just heard someone said they are concentrated in social media, so maybe we can uh, have a connection with each other, talk about our interests, and uh, looking forward to learn from everyone here. Thank you. Yeah, I think exactly. There, there, there might be collaboration opportunities. Uh, the B one is working on causal inference models, you no, know, using BERT. Uh, uh, large language model, uh, and uh, Jing Yi also has been working on social media data for a while, uh, and of course Yu and Charles as well. So definitely there are collaboration opportunities there. Great, uh, and Jeremy. Um, hi everyone, I'm Jeremy. Um, I'm a senior undergrad, um, majoring in math and CS. And yeah, I've, I've been in this group uh, since the start of this school year. And I'm really interested in learning about AI and exploring this field further after I graduate. Fantastic. Yeah, so Jeremy is also working on some AI projects you know, using OpenAI API. Great. Uh, and Charles. Hi, every Oops. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Charles. I'm a Second year data science PhD student. Um, nice to meet everyone. Uh, and learning learning about all these interesting uh, AI developments from everyone. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Charles and uh, Shan Shan. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name my name is Shan Shan Wan. Uh, I'm a year PhD student in epidemiology from UNT Health Science Center. And my uh, research interests include aging, sleep health, mental health, mental health, and I did some uh, uh, metabolic disease before. Nice to see you all here. Fantastic to have you, Shan Shan. Haven't <laughs> seen you for a while. Great. Uh, and who else? Uh, Meng Meng? Hello everyone, my name is Man Man Ji. I'm currently a postdoc at Washington uh, School of Medicine, Washington University School of Medicine. Um, I was PhD student working with Dr. N before and hope to learn more about AI in public health. Yeah, Momo has already been working in the AI field for a while. Uh, great to have you. Okay, and uh, fun. Hi, everybody. My name is Fan. Uh, I have been working with Dr. Anne as a visiting scholar. And right now, uh, I'm currently an assistant professor at Dongbei University of Finance and Economics. Uh, my research interest is about applying AI to social work and health promotion, especially. So I have been in this group from the very start, and I have been enjoying it a lot. Thank you. Indeed, yeah, you are from the very start. Great to to have you. Oh no, despite the the great time difference, <laughs> uh, fantastic. And uh, 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 Zuan. Um, hi everyone. My name is Zuan. Um, I'm from China, and currently I'm a second year um social work student. And I, I'm interested in um, hearing more on the application of AI in social work. Great, yeah, so great to see you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what, who else? Uh, oh, see. 
Um, hello, everyone. My name is Xi Wang, and, and I'm second year MPH students. I'm very interested in AI's application on public health uh, related data analysis methods. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Great, great, fantastic. Uh, who else? Uh, is that three? I, I, I couldn't <laughs> see your name. Uh, yes, Professor, it's three. three okay, then. great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Sridharan. I'm currently in my first year of public health, majoring in epidemiology and biostats. I'm interested in any use of artificial intelligence in the field of public health and in data analysis specifically. And I'm I'm really interested in the data analysis part uh, as the scope of AI in data analysis is, uh, is incomparable and time efficient. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. There are a lot of potential applications that we need to dig into linking artificial intelligence to public health. Yes, there are a lot to be done there. Great. And uh, Tong Yang? Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Tong Yang, and I'm a, like a, a first year undergrad and in arts, arts and science, so probably youngest of all here. And uh, this semester, uh, I joined pretty pretty recently under um, Professor Anne's uh, invitation. So I'm decided to learn more about AI since I'm um, I'm thinking about majoring in bio and data science. So it's my first step for, to learn uh, something about this field, AI, and and nice to meet you all. Great to have you, Tong Yang. Yes, I am sure you're the youngest in this group. Uh, but no, soon we will have, probably have people even younger than you to join us. <laughs> Great, now you hold the record. Uh, and Zach. Hi, I'm Zach. I'm a research um, instructor in a medical school. And I my research focus is on um, biomedical imaging. And I um, I reached out to Dr. An um, for uh, collaboration and also attended uh, his um, 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 AI application health data um, certification class. That was that was one wonderful. I would like to um, learn more from you guys. Fantastic! Yes, that we definitely need to uh, keep touch. Great. Okay. So have I missed anyone? Uh, I apologize if I missed anyone, but just feel free to unmute yourself and you know, make a self-introduction. Okay. So great. So I have covered everyone. Fantastic. Okay. So today we'll dig a little bit into reinforcement learning. Uh, is a relatively new topic to me as well. So I did my homework um and uh we we will dive a little bit into this topic today uh but bear with me i'm no expert in this field as well i'm still very much the beginner and i just want to share what i have learned with you um if you have questions i can answer uh it's not your fault uh it's no one's fault uh, we just need to learn more i guess okay so let me share the screen Okay. Uh, can you see my presentation slide? Good. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the, the no, I I just try to uh, make the presentation uh using a combination of Chat GPT and some other AI tools. Uh, it took me several hours to to figure something out. It's, it's not perfect. So bear with me if the presentation look a little bit uh no uh. Uh, sometimes not not entirely formatted in the right right way. Okay. okay. Uh, so as we said, this is going to be a very introductory level uh, reinforced learning uh, topic, and we will cover just the basic concepts and give you some some ideas of how to implement reinforcement learning uh, in the lab session as well. Okay. So first of all, you know, what, what is reinforcement learning and how that differ from uh, the traditional machine learning and, and deep learning? So most of us, we learned uh, machine learning first, and mainly you know, supervised learning first. And then, uh, for example, you know, traditional classification models, regression models, they are all supervised learning approach. And then we move on to uh, and supervised learning, uh, for example, clustering approaches, right? 
And then we move on to deep learning and mainly we are still dealing with supervised learning. And the supervised learning you know, is, is easy. I would say it's not really easy, but it is um, easy for the machine to learn because we provide uh, the data as well as the ground truth. Right. So uh, this is not actually exactly the way that we human being uh, are learning a new subject. Right. Um, no, for a lot of time, no, we, we would say uh, the life teaches us a lot. Right. And what does really mean? The life doesn't provide ground truth. Right. Uh, for a lot of time, we don't know what is right, what is wrong, what should be done, what is optimal. Uh, what is the correct solution? Uh, we are just learning by doing, and occasionally we get some feedback, right? Uh, we get maybe a feedback from our teachers, our parents uh, when we're in a child, or we receive some kind of reward in the workplace or punishment if we've done something wrong, right? And gradually, you know, through this you no know, feedback mechanism, we start to learn uh, how to perform a task and how to hopefully optimize our life. Although probably no one in the world know how to optimize our lives, but still we, we try to do something better, right? Uh, we, we, we try to learn more and we try to improve our life stage over time, right? So that is very much speak to the, the idea of reinforcement learning, that there's no uh, real uh, ground truth uh, that exists. Uh, the agent uh, in the environment try to learn from mistakes uh, through rewards and punishment, right? And over time, the agent learn the rule of the game and try to improve uh, its own status, right? Uh, so that is very much different. And actually, if you think about it, a lot harder than supervised learning. Right. Supervised learning is kind of easy uh, because the ground truth is there. We just find the association between you know, uh, the, the, the data and the ground truth. Whereas reinforced learning, the objective is, um, is not clear cut. Um, and also the incentive is sparse. Right? For a lot of time, we don't have a clear signal to suggest which way to go. Right? Uh, but on the other hand, reinforcement learning is more of a reflection of the life, right? The 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 vast uncertainty in the environment, uh, because you no, know, for most of the time, uh, we really don't know whether we are doing the right thing or the wrong thing, whether we are optimizing or we are going a, a, into the rabbit hole, right? Um, but uh, given this deep uncertainty, we still try to optimize, uh, no, at least try to improve uh, the status. Right? Uh, so therefore, you no, know, some people believe that reinforcement learning is really the future of uh, you no, know, you no know, AGI, the uh, artificial general intelligence, uh, because it, the machine would very much like a human being living in this real world and trying to figure out things uh, by themselves. So there are a few, few uh, important concepts of reinforcement learning. Uh, for example, agent. Uh, you could think of agent uh, as a learner, right? Or, or as a you know, human being that we try to make decisions you know, based on our interaction with the environment. Um, and uh, the agent is responsible for selecting actions based on the current state to maximize the rewards. And the environment is very easy to understand, especially uh, the context in which uh, the agent uh, interact, you know, live, um, uh, and, and learn from. So uh, it encompasses uh, you know, a lot of uh, potential feedback uh, signals that may influence the decision-making of the agent. And uh, action, so action is just, the uh, the possible strategies or possible moves that an agent can take uh, when interacting with the environment. Uh, for example, you can take an action of going to, you no. Know, uh, for example, in this afternoon, uh, we we decide to to um, to uh, to go shopping and uh, you no know, buy maybe some ice creams, right? With, with my son. Right. Uh, so we went to Costco and that is uh, an action. And actually we met several of you <laughs> in Costco. So you took the similar action because you believe that is the optimal move you know, at that time, right? In that environment. 
um, and the states. So states basically describe the current situation, uh, you no know, returned by the environment to the agent. Okay. Uh, so it will be the status quo that the agent um, you know, is in at that specific time period. Right? Um, so you could think of you no, know, the state can be either uh, either continuous uh, or discontinuous, right? In a continuous environment, the time is continuous. You the the agents uh, you know, move uh, smoothly uh, across the time. Whereas in some other situation, for example, if you play chess, then uh, the states are not dis are not continuous, right? In this case, you no, know, you make a move and your opponent make a move. So every move, uh, you know, the uh, would drive the agent into a different state. Right? Uh, so again, if you have any question, just feel free to you know either post on the chat or you no know, unmute yourself. Uh, we are not really in a hurry to you know go over all the slides. You know, we 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 can we we sh we should find you no know, uh, more uh, time to uh, to discuss if you have any questions. Okay. And uh, the reward basically is a signal, right? Uh, because the, the agent want to know whether uh, the, the, the agent is doing something right or wrong. And the way the agent can tell is from receiving either rewards or the penalty. So we could think of the penalty as the negative rewards, uh, basically working as a signal to tell the agent whether the agent is doing something right and should be encouraged or something that should be discouraged. Okay. Uh, so for example, if you play chess and the reward would be you win the game uh, or you lose the game, right? Uh, and then if you, you, you win the game, you get positive rewards, you no, know, maybe a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. If you lose the game, you no, know, your ranking is going to be reduced, right? Um, and the rewards can be you no know, can be either in the short term or in the long term, right? Um, you no, know, for example, if you consider rewards as being, um, I don't know, promoted to an executive position in the company, and then it may take years to to have such rewards, right? It's very sparse. Uh, whereas other rewards would be almost immediate. For example, we decide to to go to Costco and purchase the ice cream, right? That is something that you can get reward immediately. Um, so, and the rewards won't have to be in the same direction all the time. No, for example, if you play a chess uh, chess game, then you no, know, on, on on one move you can probably take someone else knight uh, or bishop. And you think this is a reward, but this could be very much a trap uh, because someone could intentionally sacrifice their knight or bishop to win an advantage, right? Uh, so uh, the reward is actually very complicated. Uh, and then policy. So the policy is defined as a strategy the agent takes to determine the next action uh, based on the current state. So basically, the policy is a you could think of in uh, in, in in Python you could think this is as a tuple, right, containing the current state and the next action. Okay, uh, so basically, based on the current state, what are the potential actions? So those are the policies okay, that agent can take. And value function. So value function try to estimate the expected return of state or you no know, state action pairs, right? So, um, because as we said, some of the reward are in the long term, for example, winning a chess game, right? Uh, but for the every move, you, know, you try to estimate what is the value of that move, right? Uh, that potentially lead to a win or a loss, right? So that will be the value function, right? Because you try to break down the long-term reward into actionable values uh, for each step, uh, for each state state that you are in, and also sometimes the state action pairs, right? So basically you try to estimate uh, the values associated with each state so that you can make a better choice you know, uh, given the value function. So we, we will see that in action when we talk about the the Bellman equation um, and the, the Q-learning uh, uh, algorithms. 
And finally, the discount factor. Uh, discount factor, I think, is very easy to understand if you learned economics, right? Uh, because we people tend to be, um, you know, to be uh, short-sighted uh, in terms of uh, we, we try to maximize the current value and we tend to give a, a huge discount actually to future, uh, uh, you know, future opportunities and future risks. A, a um, popular example would be environmental protection, right? If we really care about the future of many generations down the road, then probably we don't want to maybe dump you know, uh, uh, trash into the ocean and polluting the air, um, maximizing our utility today, um, et cetera, right? But we unfortunately, uh, Pro, you no know, provide a huge discount on the future uh, because we we always try to maximize our current utility and that also explains you know why you no know, a lot of people or probably the majority of people tend to be last minute intending in the homework assignments okay? uh, because well it's better to play now and worry about the homework assignments in the future right? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm kidding, but uh, I think there are some scientific value in that argument. Okay. Any questions? Okay, great. Uh, and then you know, why we really care about reinforcement learning since we have these fantastic tools about supervised learning um, and and supervised learning, right? Uh, you, you've learned, most of you, you've learned a lot about supervised learning the, because you know, most of the machine and deep learning are focusing on supervised learning, including the most recent development in large language models, right? We call them causal models because they are uh, basically self-supervised learning. They're trying to predict uh, the next word, right? Um, so why we, we, we care about reinforcement learning? What are the advantages of reinforcement learning in comparison to the other uh, learning method? Uh, the first one I would say is adaptability. Um, no, because reinforcement learning is really flexible. Okay? Um, the agent can adapt to a new environment uh, and, and try to figure out the optimal approach uh, and optimal strategies based on the environmental feedback, right? Uh, whereas the supervised learning can't really do that because it's basically fixed, right? Uh, the supervised learning, because we provide the ground truth, the agent is not really learning, uh, learning the environment feedback. It's just learning the association, try to build the association between the data uh, and, and the ground truth. That's what the, uh, the supervised learning are doing, right? Uh, so you really can't explore the uh, a new environment, right? Can't really use to solve a new question and compare across different problem solving scenarios. Right? And the second advantage of reinforcement learning is uh, facilitating decision making, especially given deep uncertainty, uh, because for a lot of time we really don't know what is the ground truth. We don't have an optimal set of policies that we try to implement. Uh, we are just having some possibly and hopefully you no know, uh, a, a reasonable guess or informative guess, right? So given this, uh, the, the, this uh, uncertainty and we try to achieve some really long-term objectives, right? It's not differentiating no cat from dog, right? Uh, it's trying to probably, for example, optimizing or our energy consumption in the, in the next decade or you know, century, right? So it's some really long-term objectives uh, that we try to make the decision uh, and given deep uncertainty. So in this case, we need uh, the agents to be autonomous and learn many potential strategies, you know, given the environment. Okay. Um, so similarly, you know, uh, in, in the same probably argument, the reinforcement learning uh, is capable to deal with complex problem solving. Okay, uh, when there's no uh, no potential optimal solution or ground truth ever exist. Okay, 
uh, because it the reinforced learning can break down a complex task into manageable actions. And by estimating the value for each action state pair is try to you know, uh, solve the problem in a retrospective fashion. Okay. We will see how that you know, uh, play a role a little later. Uh, and reinforced learning you no know, span diverse fields is um, is mainly uh, applicable to, for example, robotics. You no, know, because we 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 try to build robotic that can work with human beings in a safe environment. Uh, you no, know, in game playing, for example, uh, and autonomous driving. Uh, so those are the probably the most popular applications of reinforced learning. Uh, of course, no. We we all know about you no know, AlphaGo uh, and you no know, chess playing, right? So those are uh, the flagship uh, applications of reinforcement learning. But you know, many people believe that if we really try to build a world model that go beyond the large language model, uh, reinforcement learning is potentially one of the solutions, or probably the major solution there. Okay. Uh, but well, reinforced learning have a lot of limitations as well. Uh, one is you no know, sample efficiency, uh, because well, consider that reinforced learning the agent needs to explore um, the the environment fully to understand uh, the, the the optimal actions. Uh, so it needs a lot of data, you no, know, uh, and the computation is very heavy. Um, and you no, know, some of the reinforced learning may not really achieve uh, results, not optimal results, even even meaningful results, uh, because one is a lack of data. The second is you no know, uh, very weak signal about the reward, uh, because if the reward is inconsistent, it may lead uh, you no know, disarray uh, of reinforcement learning. So reinforcement learning may not really you know, able to learn anything, you no know, given either the sparsity uh, of the reward or the incons inconsistency of the reward. Uh, for example, if sometimes the person do the same thing, got punished, some other time do the same thing, but got promoted, then it's basically going to confuse uh, the, 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 the agent. Um, and uh, usually reinforced learning takes you know, thousands, if not millions of time of, of, of epochs to train. Okay? So it's, it's not like a reinforced, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in deep learning, we usually train the model maybe, um, you know, uh, tens, uh, maybe in, in, in the tens or, or some, uh, sometimes hundreds of, uh, of epochs, but in uh, reinforced learning is usually in the, uh, in the tens of thousand to millions. Okay, okay. so uh, the difference between uh, reinforced learning and uh, other learning approaches, we already talked about supervised learning and, and supervised learning, and you are all familiar with them. And another approach, which is very interesting, um, uh, but I, I again, I don't have a, a good, uh, a deep understanding of those algorithms. It had its own domain. It's called evolutionary algorithms. So the evolutionary algorithm came very much from Darwin's idea of the survival of the fittest, right? Uh, basically claimed that uh, by natural selection, uh, some species uh, were uh, able to reproduce and become prevalent while other species die out uh, because of lack of feet, right? Uh, and then basically the evolutionary algorithm try to uh, have a parent that can give birth to many babies, okay? uh, many children, of course, no uh, algorithm, not, not really uh, uh, in a biological way. Uh, and then you no know, given certain condition, uh, we'll be able to observe what are the variations of those children can survive where other children die. Okay? So over time, you no know, through changing those conditions, uh, the the evolution of the the children would occur. And then we just select those fittest children as the potential models. Okay? So those are the ideas of evolutionary uh, uh, algorithm. Uh, which is different uh, than reinforced learning because in reinforced learning, we have the agent or agents that work over time within the environment and improve their strategy. Uh, 
uh, whereas evolutionary algorithm try to pick uh, the most fit, uh, the fittest uh, uh, children uh, uh, in, in a certain environment. Okay, questions, comments? Okay, good. Uh, okay, then uh, the agents, um, uh, we, I think we already defined the agents. Uh, so here, if you are, if you are still a little bit confused, uh, here we give some examples. Uh, for example, agent in uh, a chess playing game uh, may learn to make move to win the game or a robot navigating a maze, uh, those are all you know, traditional agents in reinforcement learning. Uh, an agent can be uh, episodic or continuous. You know, an episodic agent would be, for, for example, playing games, right? Uh, because uh, playing chess, right? Because they, they take turns, right? They are, they, they are clear breaks and distinct episodes. Whereas continuous agent, for example, uh, say an agent driving a, a car, right? Uh, because that is a continuous flow uh, without distinct episode boundaries. Right? And uh, we can also classify agents by deterministic or stochastic. Determinist agent is always going to do the same outcome given a, a, a state, right? When the state is fixed, then the agent uh, node, uh, 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 action is fixed, right? Um, no, for example, whenever it, it, uh, the, the, the robot uh, see a, I don't know, no, uh, in the conveyor belt, they see uh, a, a broken egg, the robot is going to pick it up, right? So this is deterministic agent. Uh, stochastic agent just means that there are uh, probabilities associated with the agent uh, decision making. Okay. So even given the same state, the agent may take a different uh, action. Uh, um, no, for example, no, uh, the agent uh, in a state when it, see, it sees a, a broken egg, uh, the agent can you no know, say 30% probability of uh, leaving as it is and 70% probability of taking it uh, out. Okay. okay. Uh, and the environment, the environment I think is very easy to understand. Uh, for example, in terms of autonomous driving, the environment include the roads, traffic signals, vehicles, pedestrians, obstacles, influencing the vehicle's decision-making. And the environment can be simple or can be really complex. Okay? Uh, if you want to mimic the real world situation, it can have you know, tens of thousands of variables in that environment. Uh, and state. Uh, so state, some people confuse state between state and environment. They think, well, the, the state is just a current environment, uh, but not necessarily. Okay. So the state basically is the current situation perceived by the agent from the environment, because it, the environment can be infinitely uh, complicated but the agent won't have to, or most likely would not be able to perceive all of them, right? Uh, for example, if you go to Walmart, um, you know, uh, then you know, there are tens of thousands of products and items there, but they all belong to the environment, right? If each product is a variable, there's going to be tens of thousands of variables, right? But when you walk through the aisle, um, you, you are not really observing all the items, right? So, uh, and most of the items would be irrelevant to the agent, right? So the, the, the state means that what variables that the agent are paying attention to at that specific time. It could be uh, just the aisle, uh, plus maybe the products uh, line up on the aisle, or maybe something very different, right? Uh, really depending on the goal of the agent. Right. If the agent is trying to identify certain item, then the items are important. But if the agent is just trying to, um, I don't know, walk from from walk to to the pharmacy in in the uh, in Walmart, then you no, know, all the other items uh, except the you no know, pharmaceutical the, the the drugs are not really important. Right. Uh, so uh, the state can be a lot smaller in terms of the variable uh, construction compared to the environment. Right? 
and then you no know, action selection. Action selection basically determine the, the agents need to decide upon what action to take based on the current state. Okay. Uh, and of course, you no, know, by taking action, uh, the uh, the agent is trying to maximize the reward at, or achieving the goals. Okay. Um, uh, so the 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 action selection is is really dependent upon the the uh, the, the the role and the potential goal of the agent. Okay. Um, okay. Any question comments? Let me see. Uh... Okay, fantastic. So Zach uh, commented, I published two papers using evolutionary algorithm 10 years ago to solve combinationary optimization problem. That's fantastic. So maybe we should invite you sometime to talk about evolutionary algorithms. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll follow up with you. I think it's really in, in, uh, important topic that I agree with you is less popular nowadays, uh, but I, I think it's, it's very important. I think it's really, really fascinating idea, uh, although well computationally heavy probably. So yeah, let's definitely talk about this. Uh, great, thank you. Um, and then, yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Markov decision uh, process, right? Uh, because that is the framework uh, that the reinforcement learning is, is, is trying to solve. So uh, the Markov decision processes or the MDPs are framework for decision making with random outcome controlled by a decision maker. Um, and it models the situation where the outcome are mixed of randomness and decision influence. Right? So to understand the different components of uh, MDPs, uh, the main components are states uh, as actions A, uh, transition probably P, rewards R, and discount factor gamma. So those are the main components. Okay? Uh, and uh, we probably introduced uh, most of them. Right? You, you, we introduced state, action, rewards, discount. Uh, the discount, of course, is a factor between you no know, uh, zero to one, right? Uh, it's only between zero and one. Um, uh, one means that uh, the uh the, the 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 you you have no discount on the future. The future is as important as the current state. Uh, whereas a gamma equals zero means that well only you only care about now, right? You you don't care you care nothing about future, right? So usually is is a, a number between zero and one, of course. And the transition property is basically the property that you transition from one state to the next state, okay? Uh, and of course that is also bonded between zero and one. Okay, um, and uh, regarding the yeah action selection mechanisms, uh, how the the agents going to select uh, the the different actions? Uh, there are a different few a diff different methods. Uh, the first one, of course, is just a random exploration. Um, random explore uh, different actions to see what are the rewards, you know, what are the punishment. Um, and random exploration is important uh, because the agent, uh, by exploring the environment freely, will be able to discover new uh, possibilities and learn about the environment through just trial and error. Right. So we often say that when people are young, no, you should no, you 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 won't uh, be afraid of. Of, of failure, right? Because you can try different things. If you fail, that is okay. And what does it really mean? It means that when people are young, we are encouraged to explore probably randomly, right? In a more random fashion at least, right? Try different uh, majors, maybe try different, uh, I don't know, uh, lifestyle, um, you know, try different work uh, to see whether it fit with you. Uh, because, well, you no, know, you, you can very much freely explore a variety of of uh, of situations before you, you you land on something that you truly have passion for. Okay, um, and then interesting when people getting older, uh, no, we probably uh, no, of course not formally, but probably we we think something about no epsilon greedy. Okay, so that is the second mechanism. 
So Epsilon Greedy is a strategy that balances exploration and exploitation okay, in action selection. So what exploration? Well, exploration is basically just explore different ideas, try different action to see, you know, through trial and error, which is which is good and which is not so good, which give you more reward, which give you uh, more punishment, right? Uh, what is exploitation? Exploitation means that you have some experience about this world um, and you try to take advantage of that experience, right? Uh, so, for example, if you know, uh, know every time you, uh, you, um, I mean, uh, eat an ice cream, and you will feel later on stomachache, okay? Um, because you no, know, your stomach is not used to, I mean, cold stuff, right? So, if you know this experience, then you want to exploit this experience by not really temperating yourself to eat ice cream, although it is that it is offered for free, for example, right? Um, uh, so that is that exploitation, right? And usually when people are young, we are more in the exploration. And when people get older, we try to exploit our experience, right? Uh, and there's always a balance, right? There's always a trade-off because you have, people have limited time, right? Uh, so given that time frame, you either can do exploration, more exploration, or more exploitation, right? Um, but you cannot do both more, right? So uh, the time taking one is going to compromise for the time taking the other, right? So that is the fundamental trade-off actually in reinforcement learning, because to what extent the agent is going to explore the world, and to what extent the agent needs to exploit what the agent has learned from the world to make an action, okay? Um, and so the epsilon uh, is the probability uh, that uh, when, when favoring uh, you no know, exploration versus exploitation, okay? So usually we would see that the agent uh, is going to be defined in you know, the epsilon greedy so that at the very beginning, when the agent is learning this new world, um, this new environment, uh, we give uh, you know, a, a, a high probability so that the, the agent is learning from exploration, right? Uh, because at that time, uh, the agent's just trying to learn the environment. But as time goes on, uh, the epsilon is going to be reduced so that the agent is mainly exploiting what the agent has already been learned. Okay. Uh, so that 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 is that is the, the basic idea. And this and it's really fantastically matched to our human, probably human experience, right? Uh, and the policy-based method that we will talk about later. Okay. Any questions so far? Or comments? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so here we, we give more formal dash, uh, definition about the mark of decision process. Uh, just a copy and paste from uh, from um, the, uh, the chat GPT. Uh, because I have some formulas that can really embed into the, the PBT. I, I will need probably some of your help uh, to find a way to embed LaTeX uh, into uh, uh, point point. Okay. But nevertheless, you no, know, we have for, for the uh, MDP, uh, the Markov decision process, we have the state, action, transition probabilities, uh, rewards, uh, and S would mean uh, the current state, and S uh, prime just means the the transition, uh, the next state, okay, um, and discount factor, right? Uh, okay, so uh, when we try to solve the MDP, you no, know, we we uh, there are various algorithms that have been developed, okay, that both use the both machine learning as well as deep learning or combination uh, to try to solve the MDP, okay. Uh, so uh, the, the, the famous solution uh, is called the Bellman equation. Uh, I think it's developed by Richard Bellman, a mathematician uh, actually many years ago. Uh, 
So the Melman equation is still widely used. It's a recursive solution. Uh, so the Bellman equation provides a solution for finding the uh, the optimal policy uh, in both deterministic as well as stochastic environments. Uh, deterministic environment means the environment is fixed, right? Um, there's no no probably not probability driven, whereas stochastic environment means there are probabilities, right? No, the trans the state transitions are are, are, are stochastic. Okay. Um, so uh so let's talk a little bit about the Bellman equation. Uh, so the Bellman equation, uh, we need to differentiate between two different environments. One is deterministic, the other is stochastic. So let's first talk about uh, the Bellman equation in deterministic environment. Um, we can calculate uh, the, the, the value of the state determined uh, by immediate reward. Um, and it includes discounted value resulting state for decision making. Okay. So let's take a look of this uh, equation. Actually, it's, it's very simple. Uh, it's very simple, but it's truly powerful. Uh, so in this deterministic environment, uh, the outcome of each action is predictable, right? Because not driven by probability, you can directly calculate uh, the outcome for each action. Uh, so uh, the Vs, no, uh, S is the state S. Uh, the Vs basically is the value of the state S. Okay? because you are interested in, you want to associate each state with a value so that you are going to pick the state with the highest value, right? Um, so the value given a, a state uh, equals this, okay? Uh, and here the max A is maximizing over all possible action A, okay? So, uh, uh, so you, basically you exhaust all the possibility, all the possible actions, and you choose the the, the action uh you no know, with the highest value. Okay. And the RSA is the reward you received after taking action in state S. Uh, and then the gamma, it, remember, is the discount factor because we discount the future values. Okay. Uh, and uh the the VS uh, as prime is the value of the resulting state uh, as prime. So uh, the explanation is uh, the equation calculates the value of each state by considering both the immediate reward uh, as well as the discounted value of the next state. Okay, uh, and is it is it, going to uh, find the among all of that uh, the, uh, the 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 value that that the action that maximizes this equation. Um, so, uh, and if in each state you can calculate, so now think about this is a chain of event, right? Because for every single state, you, you can calculate the value associated with state, then, uh, you can basically retrospectively calculate all the states. Okay. And then you just need to, it's going to be pretty easy, right? You just need to pick the action that maximizes, uh, the, 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 the value, okay, uh, associated with that state. So, uh, well, that seems to be easy, but uh, is practically very hard. Okay. Uh, so, but that is deterministic environment, but the environment that we live is not deterministic, right? In most cases, unless in the simple games, it's not going to be deterministic, right? Um, so in the stochastic environment, do we have that? Uh, yeah, in stochastic environment, uh, the equation a little bit different, right? It's still very much stay the same, but a little different. Uh, but actually you can see that it's nothing more than just you know, take the expected value of, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, all the states, right? And then take the action that maximize uh, the expected value uh, of uh, the state uh, functions. Okay. So uh, here, you no, know, uh, this, the, the uh the p s prime no uh and this is you no know, given as an a okay so this is a conditional probability right uh the probability of transitioning from uh s state as to s prime uh after taking action a right so this is the probability of the transition probability and this r s a s prime is the reward received for transitioning from s to s prime given action a. 
Uh, and as you can see here, well, it's still in, 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 the, in, in the bracket, we have this reward plus the discounted value of, uh, of future state. Uh, but then we need to time that with the corresponding probability, right? Because uh, you no know, given a certain action, you are not deterministically go to S prime. You go to S prime with a certain probability. Um, so that is the Bellman uh, equation for the stochastic environment. Any question? Okay, great. Uh, okay. And uh, I think we can very much skip some of that. Uh, yeah, you already resolved that through dynamic programming. Uh, and now let's talk a little bit about Q learning, which I think is the 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 most fundamental uh, reinforcement learning method. Okay, so Q learning is a model free reinforcement learning, meaning that it doesn't depend on the model. Uh, it's basically just copy the Q table, so called Q table, that stored all the uh, the action state pair. Okay. Um, so uh, the Q learning guides the agent to go without uh, you know, environment dynamics. So it enables learning action values through exploration. So let's take a look of the Q learning. Uh, the objective that are clear is learn the policy that maximize the total reward obtained by the agent uh, and is try to guide the agent towards the action that leads to the highest total reward, it basically the cumulative reward. It's not a reward that you receive immediately, it's a reward that you accumulate over time. Okay. Um, and uh, it, no, let's take a look of the uh, the equation here. So the equation, I would say, is it's uh, fairly simple, um, but really powerful. Okay. Uh, and you you know this sign, so the, the, this this arrow uh, there's been uh, update. Okay, so this is uh, I don't know, but may, maybe it's not a, a pure, it's not a a, a, a rigorous uh, math sign, uh, but in computer science, you know, you know that you no, know, you 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 update the right value and assign that back to the the left hand side. Okay. Um, so here the QSA is the current estimate of the action value. So uh, the S is uh, still the state, A is the action, and Q is basically the Q value. Uh, it's very much like the V here, okay? Uh, is the, 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 count, the value of in the state as taking action A, okay? And R far is the learning rate, right? This is very, this should be very familiar to you if you learn the you no know, deep learning, right? Because deep learning is about, about no, a machine learning is trying to pick a, a good learning rate. A learning rate that is too large is you no know, is, is going to make the gradient uh, unstable. Um, uh, and whereas the, the, the learning rate is too small, it, you know, you are going to take many, many, many iterations before you can reach the optimum, right? So the learning rate is an important hyperparameter in, in deep learning and machine learning. Uh, here is a very similar approach, right? Uh, that you try to update the value estimation, the Q value, uh, but uh, you want it, you 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 want it to be balanced. Okay, uh, you don't want to change suddenly. You 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 try to estimate this, uh, you know, uh, through iterations. Okay, and the R is the reward uh, received after taking action A in state S. Right, um, it is the same as in the in the Bellman equation, uh, and the gamma is the is still the discount factor. And here, uh, the max A, A prime, Q S prime, A prime, is the maximum predictor reward uh, obtained from the next state. Okay. So uh, basically it is uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the action that allow you to achieve the maximum uh, predictor reward okay, uh, when you go to the next state. Okay. And then finally, you need to minus uh, QSA uh, because later on we'll explain why uh, we need to minus this Q QSA basically itself. Okay? Um, so you could think of this Q learning equation as a way to keep updating the estimation of the value 
uh, at state A when uh, at state S taking action A. Okay, uh, by foreseeing uh, all the potential actions that you can take that uh, drive you to the next state. Okay. Uh, here, yeah, we we talk about the learning rate, this factor factor and policy, and uh, yeah. So how to estimate this guy, right? Um, to estimate the future reward, uh, uh, though this this term represent the estimated maximum future reward obtainable from the next state uh, as prime. You no, know, considering all potential actions of, of a prime. Okay, basically you try out all the potential actions and you find out uh, the maximum reward uh, in the next state. Okay, uh, and how they're going to do that? Well, that is through exploration. Right. So basically, you no. Know, you, you allow the agent to try through trial and error many, many, many different uh, actions. All the actions in all the states, right? And then you just keep updating the value, okay? Uh, till you pick, uh, till you find the action that can maximize uh, the the uh, the value associated with that state. Okay. Um, okay. And. Uh, and finally, why we need to subtract the Q and uh, the QSA, the, the current value associated with the, the state and action. Uh, so that is actually this term uh, is, is known as the temporal uh, difference uh, difference error. Right? Um, so uh, the, the error represents the difference between the agent current estimate of the future reward, so which is QSA, and the newly observed you no know, uh, observed estimate uh, the newly achieved reward in in the subsequent action okay so you could think of this as the agent is not going to go anywhere the agent is going to stick uh, to the the action unless the agent can gain something better than the current state right so so basically you you always compare the future uh, action value to the current value to see whether there's improvement. If there's no improvement, why I need to move, change my action, right? So um, that, that is the, the, the key idea of using this temporal difference error. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, just for the for time being, we probably want to, uh, to, to uh, skip some of the slides. Uh, uh, and in terms of initiation, we start with arbitrary Q values. Usually we start with a Q value of zeros. Say so, so Q values will be remember the Q is have two subscriptions, right? One is the state, one is the action, right? So if you have you know, four states uh, 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 and four actions, you have a total of 16 uh, Q values, okay? And you basically keep all the, the Q values to be zero to be to get started. And then you just update the Q values uh, when you when the agent start to explore the environment. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, the model free uh, re, uh, algorithm, for example, the Q, uh, the Q learning um, doesn't require a model. Uh, it's very flexible, but uh, it it, it requires a lot of explorations. Okay? Uh, tens of thousands, really depending on uh, depending on the environment. Sometimes millions of uh, trial and error, right? Um, and it may convert very slowly in complex environment. Okay? And uh, this one thing that's not mentioned is that Q learning is only good if you have. Uh, uh, this can discrete uh, no states, right? If you have a continuous states, then you suddenly have infinite number of Q values, right? Because the state is continuous. Uh, in that case, the Q learning uh, will not be able to handle. Okay. Uh, and built on top of that, uh, well, you can guess that we can combine the Q learning with deep learning, right? Uh, in this case, we are not really filling a Q table. Uh, we are building neural network to represent uh, the the complexity of state spaces. Okay? And in that case, uh, because we don't really need a Q table to store uh, the individual states, um, but through embedding those states into a neural network, then we can extend the capacity of deep learning uh, of Q learning 
to deal with continuous case, continuous states as well. So that is one advantage of deep computer learning. But of course, computationally, it's even more heavy. Okay. Uh, but besides that, there are many other algorithms. Uh, one very popular algorithm is called the policy gradient methods. So this method is very different than the Q-learning. Remember, the Q-learning is trying to learn the, uh, the value of state action pair, right? Uh, whereas the policy gradient methods try to as try to optimize a policy. Right? A policy is just a combination of, of strategies, basically uh, action, um, uh, the, the, the actions to take you no know, given a state. Right? So uh, the policy gradient method is trying to op directly optimizing the policy, right? Instead of estimating the value associated with the state. Okay? So it turns out the policy gradient method is more efficient uh, in general, in comparison to uh, the the, uh, the the Q learning method, okay? uh, it's also model free, uh, but of, uh, uh, again, it is computationally happy. And finally, is the actor critic method or A three C, um, and the actor critic method is basically a combination of both world, a combination of Q learning and uh, the policy gradient methods. Okay. Um, so you no, know, it can incorporate multiple agents. It can be calculated uh, in a parallel fashion, so greatly improve the the uh, the efficiency of computation. Right? Uh, but well, you no, know, uh, here we we learn a little bit about Q learning. Uh, we we talk about Bellman equation and move on to Q learning. Uh, and the, we also learned a little bit about deep Q learning, uh, DDPG, uh, uh, a popular method for policy gradient, and also the A3C, uh, which is the actor critic uh, methods. Okay. okay, so here we list these advantages and disadvantages of those methods. Uh, we will not really go into much detail of that. But just for the time being, uh, we think I think we should move to uh, the lab session. But any questions so far? Okay, so uh, hold a second. Uh, I still need to uh, open my VS Code to get uh, my simulation running. Um, uh, Yeah. Well, where is oh, okay? I think it's here. Yep, okay. Uh, so let me share the screen again. Share screen. Uh, can you all see my Visual Studio uh, VS Code open? Yes. Okay, great, great. Okay. Uh, so for the time being, here I pro I, later on I'll I'll ask you to uh, to post uh, both the presentation today as well as the the VS Code. Uh, to our uh, repo uh, GitHub, so you 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 are be able to download and play yourself. Uh, but here are some of the online tutorials I find really fascinating. So I, I list them here. Feel free to take a closer look. Um, and uh, here we import. So th uh, so this is the Visual Studio uh, VS Code. Uh, it's not the Google Colab. Uh, in the Google Colab. Uh, if you want to run the IPRNG IP uh, YMB Jupyter Notebook file, probably you need to make uh, you no know, some some modifications uh, because we 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 have some visualization that the setting is a little bit different in your local machine versus in uh, in, in Google Colab. Uh, but I trust you can all figure it out yourself. Okay. Uh, but if you run your own VS Code uh, in your local environment, uh, you should get the, the exact same results. Uh, so let me, let me close this. Uh, uh, I'll close this terminal. Uh, let's drop this. 
Okay, so we import some modules and most importantly, you want to have this gymnasium. Uh, and this is the, uh, this was previously hosted by OpenAI called OpenAI Gen, but later on, I think this become open source and hosted by probably in the community as well, uh, in the community is that not, not really uh, implemented uh, by, by OpenAI anymore. Um, and I highly recommend stable baseline three. There are a variety of reinforced learning packages, uh, but uh, by far stable baseline is the most popular option. So stable baseline was originally uh, uh, developed by OpenAI, uh, but then starting from version three, it become community uh, 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 project. So it, it implement a variety of uh, popular and the state of the art uh, deep uh, reinforced learning algorithms. Uh, so DQN is the deep Q learning. Uh, and we have the PPO, A to C is the A3C, the, the uh, no, uh, actor critic method we talk about. DDPG is the policy gradient. They have a, a variety of others uh, like PPO, TD3, SAC. So all those are uh, very popular and powerful reinforced learning algorithms. Uh, so one challenge of you no know, running reinforced learning is that you have to build an environment, right? Uh, which can be really difficult uh, because you no, know, probably most of us are not software engineer uh, that uh, we we don't know much about the visualization, etc. Uh, but great uh, opportunity is that Gem have built a lot of environment for us. You can play with, and you can try out different environments, uh, try different algorithm on the environment uh, very easily. Uh, you can also extend the environment by making your own environment. I've never made my own environment, not yet, but uh, I think I'm going to try probably when, when I have time. Okay. So uh, here we import those modules uh, and uh, we initialize the environment. So I'm going to use this frozen lake environment. I think it's fascinating. Uh, it's a very classic environment, a, a game that probably many of you played with when you are a child. Uh, we specify a customer's map. S stand for the start, and uh, F stand for the frozen lake, and H stand for a hole. So you want to, you don't want to jump into a hole. Okay, if you jump into a hole, you 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 are basically that. Okay, uh, virtually that. Um, and then G is the goal. You try to reach the goal, uh, and you are playing in this environment. Okay, so you can extend this environment. Here I'm going to make it easy. Use a four by four environment. You can in you can make this uh frozen lake uh uh slippery. Slippery. Here I I have an explanation. If you make this slippery. You, the uh, the player is going to move in the intended direction by a third of the probability. Okay, another two thirds probably you may either move to the right or to the left, or you no, know, basically you're going to move into a different direction. Okay, uh, so this is going to make the the the, the game a lot harder. Uh, but well, we'll play easy, and as a homework, uh, if you want homework, <laughs> uh, maybe you don't. Uh, you you can try to make this uh easily slippery. Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 true, uh, yes. Uh, then uh, you, know, you can try out the algorithm. It's going to be very different. It's going to be a lot harder okay, uh, for, for, the, uh, for the algorithm to solve. And uh, as I make this environment, uh, you can take a look at the observation. We have a total of 16 observations. Uh, uh, observation is just, you, know, you could think of the states, right? We have 16 different states and those states are here. Right, uh, no, because at one time point, an agent can stay in one of those uh, states, okay, cells, you could see. Uh, and then the action, there are four actions in total. You either move to the top, to the left, to the right, or to the bottom, okay. And to help you see the environment, I, I, I have this, uh, this uh, small function I wrote, uh, so later on, I'm going to be able to display this environment. So you'll see that uh, the play in action. Uh, but before that, uh, introduce a few very important function in, in, in gymnasium. One is sample, okay? Sample means you can just randomly pick an action, okay? Remember in the action space, there are four actions you can take. You can move to the, to, to the, to the left, to the right, to the, uh, to the top, to the bottom. 
Uh, so if you random pick action, this time you, you, are, you are moving in the, uh, I think it's, it's, it's top. And then this time you to the left and this time you to down and then this time you to, to the top again, okay? So um, no, basically it's just, yeah, a random selection of action. And you can reset the environment like this. So reset the environment is going to put the agent always to the starting point, right? Remember the starting point is here. And then, uh, then you can take a look of the output of the step function. Step function is basically transition from state, current state to the next state. Okay, so that is step function. If you choose step function, uh, it's going to give you the next state. Okay, where you're going to stay in the next state and what is the reward? Well, in, in most cases, reward is zero, but unless you reach the end, you get, I think you get a reward of one. But if you fall into any of the holes, you get a reward of zero. Okay, so most cases it's going to be reward zero. Okay, and then is uh, basically tell you whether the game is is finished. Right, you, you, there are two possibilities. One is that you, you die, you drop into the hole, you die, and that's done. The other is you reach the goal. Okay, which is not. Okay, otherwise it's not done. Okay, and okay. So uh, you can set the number of episodes you want to run. So here I write a function that uh, I'm going to random select action to play the game. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, choose the best action to based, uh, based on the queue table. So here is not actually, I sh I, this is wrong. It's not a queue table. In this case, I just randomly pick a function. I'm not going to base on a queue table because the queue table has not been estimated. Uh, and I'll, I'll render this so you can take a look. Uh, so if I click here, you will see able to see the, so this little guy is, is making a decision where to go. Uh, it start from the beginning and is try to move his way every time it's random. Okay. Right? And then uh, unfortunately this guy died. Okay. Uh, because it's dropped into this, this ice hole. Okay. Right? You can play this again to see uh, how far this guy can go this time. Okay. It's random, okay, the action is completely random. Okay. See here, this guy die again, okay, not so good. Uh, because, well, if you play in the in this uh, ice hole game, frozen lake uh, game, you don't, you don't want to be random, right? But random is good for the agent because over time the agent is going to learn because in both time the agent learn nothing, right? Uh, it's um, is give a zero reward, right? Total reward is zero, okay? So now we are going to initiate the queue table. The queue table, as we remember, is state action pair, right? We have 16 state, we have four actions, so we have a total of uh, 64 uh, uh, queue, queue values, and all of them are initiated as zero, okay? So the queue table is basically just the state observation times the action is a, is a matrix. So now everything is zero, but now we implement the Q equation, try to estimate, uh, try to updating the Q values, okay? So we will give some uh, hyperparameters. We will run you know, 10,000 epochs. Uh, so every time we iterate for you know, 100 times maximum, if it's 100 times it's still, the, the agent is still not died and still work, walking, we will we'll, we'll kill the process. Uh, because we don't want to wait forever, right? Uh, and we initialize uh, exploration probably to be one. Remember, uh, exploration when this this exploration uh, 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 epsilon is very large, it means that the the agent is freely exploring the environment. We are not exploring. We are not exploring the experience the agent learned. But then we also set exploration decreasing decay, right? This is very much like in the in the machine learning we we talk about uh, you no know, uh, the, the 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 decay uh, that we uh, we will gradually reduce this probability, okay? Because when the agent become more experienced, we want the agent to to some extent exploit what the agent has learned, okay? And we can provide uh, the minimum exploration probably to be uh, just 1%, okay? Uh, so you could consider that we are creating this curve. At first, the exploration dominates, 
But over time, exploration probability reduces. And finally, when the agent is learning a lot, maybe have you know, uh, a thousand times, two thousand times of running, the agent are mainly exploiting rather than uh, explore, ex exploit, exploiting. Um, OK. Uh, and then uh, the discount factor, the gamma, is uh, I said 0.99. So, uh, the learning rate is uh, 10%. Okay. So uh, let's take those values. Those values are important. Okay. Uh, I'm just taking, uh, because this, this is a simple illustration, I'm going to take the easy way. Okay. And I'll use the list to store the rewards okay, over time. Okay. And then I'm going to iterate uh, the episode. Okay. So you can read this. This is very simple actually to, to, to do, but uh, we don't want to go into details. Uh, here, I only want to mention this exactly, if you take a close look, this is exactly uh, the Q learning uh, algorithm that we introduced. Okay, so, um, but everything else is pretty easy to explain. Um, uh, we just iterate this process many, many times to update the Q table. So we iterate, how many times we, we iterate? Uh, we iterate uh, for, yeah, uh, uh, 10,000 times, okay? And after that, you can print the Q table. The Q table looks like this, okay? It's very fast, okay? The Q table basically fill in the values, right? Uh, and values between zero and one, zero and one okay? Uh, because this, this is the expected reward, right? Uh, based on the action. And now since we have this Q table, everything else is easy, right? We just play by the table, right? Play by the rule. Now we have the rule. We just pick every single time. We just pick the Q, uh, the Q value, uh, uh, the action that maximizes the Q value. Okay. So, so this is action we are going to take. Okay. And this time, this action we're going to take, etc. Okay. Uh, and for zeros, for this ones, uh, why they all zero? because this person fall into the lake, right? So we, we, we don't provide this. Um, so no action should be taken, right? Uh, because you no, know, if you fall into the lake, you're, 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 you know, uh, you're virtually dead, right? Uh, okay, so now that's print the mean reward per thousand episode. Okay, so we we'll see whether the, 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 uh, the, the, the agent is learning, right? Because over time, if the agent is learning, we should see that by playing more times, uh, the agent is achieving higher reward, um, uh, average reward, right? So let's see, okay? So indeed, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the agent is learning because at first, um, the, the mean reward for the first 1,000 episode is only 2.26, uh, right? But it gradually increases, uh, and it reaches you no know, almost uh, you no know, uh, one uh, when we have the final episodes. Okay. So now let's play the game again. So this time we are going to play not randomly, but based on the Q table. Okay. So that's see how this uh, th this agent performs. Bingo, right? So the agent is much smarter, right? Because it's played by the rule, by the Q table. But let's play again to make sure that it's not. Uh... Okay, All right? So this time, uh, no, you get a reward of one. Okay? It succeeded the first time. Uh, if you want to try different algorithms, for example, if you want to try the deep Q learning, you can use the DQ and it's so simple, uh, so simple made by, by Jim, uh, made, uh, sorry, made by uh, the, the stable uh, baseline three. The stable baseline uh, has a uh, complete integration with the gymnasium. Hey, so uh, it, they, they, they work uh, basically uh, in, in, in harmony. Um, so you can create a, uh, so previously, we hard coded right the Q learning right. We hard coded this part how to uh, update uh, our Q table right. But in fact, you don't need to do that uh, because you have the stable diffusion right. Uh, so in stable diffusion, you just need to specify uh, the algorithm you use. So here, I'm going to use the deep Q learning. Uh, you should use the MLP policy. Uh, that is the I think it stand for the multiple perceptron. Uh, basically, it's just a very simple neural network. 
okay, uh, feed forward network. Um, and you provide your environment that you define still the frozen lake. Uh, verbose equal zero means that don't surely show me anything. If you set verbose equal one, it's gonna give you a lot of updates. Okay, so I just specify this, uh, initiate this uh, deep Q learning model. And this time, make sure that you train it many times. Uh, as I said, the deep learning neural network, if you want to really optimize the, the, the values for the neural network is time consuming. Okay, so if you only try 10,000 times, unfortunately, it won't work, okay? The agent uh, is going to stuck somewhere, okay? Uh, if you don't believe me, try that, okay? So that is the reason I try a million times, okay? Um, I currently don't have a GPU. So if you have GPU, I guess uh, the, the process could be a lot uh, faster. Uh, but since I don't have GPU, it's going to take uh, a much longer time, okay? So um, yeah, if your machine uh, can, if you can utilize uh, the GPU in the machine, definitely do that. So the progress bar basically controls this. So you'll be able to see you know, how much has been completed. It's gonna take a little while, okay? But in the meantime, any questions? Yes, I have a question about the Q table. So um, I'm still, Cannot quite understand it. It's is that the each row is like the the each sixteen cell, and the column is like up, down, left, right, and yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but if like it's it's the first row, um, the first row, first column, so the people only can go right or go down, it cannot go up and go left. Why it still have the uh, 0.94? Uh... Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is how the gym is uh, is programmed. You cannot, uh, let's see here, yeah. So here at this stage, right? Uh, yeah, physically you can't really go up, mm -hmm. uh, but the gym is made in the way that you can, if you choose go up, you are going to stay here in the state, mm -hmm. uh, but still is counted the move. Mm -hmm. So that is how Jim is is programmed. I think that this is the default. I think you probably would be able to change it, uh, mm -hmm. but that is the yeah the default uh, no action that you can take. Yeah. So indeed, you can choose to go up, but you won't physically go up. You are going to stay here for that run. Mm -hmm. And another question is like, uh, because of this table is stable, uh, so the people only can do like go right and go down and pick and go to the goal. Um, but it still have another routine. It's go down and go right. But because of the the table, I think it's because of the table, like the maximum value is for the first sale it's go right, so it will never go down. Is that true? You are exactly right. So that, that is a fantastic observation. So mm -hmm. that is actually one limitation of Q table because it's deterministic, right? So when it's estimated, it only gives you one uh, best option. Uh, although you can have, you could have multiple optimal, uh, optimal solutions. So here, there are two optimal solutions, right? One is to go here, 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 and the other is go here. And the, uh, actually third solution, you can go here, 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 right? So mm -hmm. all the three solutions actually have the same uh, uh, maximum reward, right? Uh, so, but then the Q table estimate one solution, but uh, yeah, it's going to be deterministic every time you go this, but you don't explore other options. Okay. Yeah, so that is a, a limitation of, of Q table. But every time the convergence could be different. So maybe the other time the convergence would be go here, right? Uh, but well, when the Q table is estimated, yeah, it gives you one best solution, uh, but may not be, yeah, may not be the, uh, the, the entire set of optimal solutions. Yeah, great, uh, great observation. Uh, okay, I think we are done, right? We are 100%. And now let's uh, try this, playing this game again to see uh, how the DQ, uh, DQN perform. 
bingo, right? <laughs> we still get the, the same reward. Uh, and here uh, we, we uh, yeah, we, we can evaluate uh, the, the model. Uh, here we just uh, you know, wrap uh, the, the previous evaluation into a function so that we can evaluate many other models as well. So here, let's evaluate this, uh, this DQ model, and we still want to see uh, no, uh, the mean reward per 100 episode. We see whether this improvement, uh, whether it's achieved the results. Um, because this model has already been trained, well, you know, for all the episode, it's achieved uh, 100%. So every time, uh, there's no one uh, mistake being, being made. Okay. Um, you can try different models. So here you can implement another model, A to C. So this is A3C model, the actor critic model that we introduced. Um, you can try that model. You, again, you try this a million times, and then you train the model as you see we previously trained the model. Uh, it also achieved 100% uh, accuracy. Okay. Uh, success, not accuracy. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's all we have today. Any questions, comments? I'm just curious, uh, maybe it's a stupid question. So this is a simple game. If like, for, if taking the goal game example, for every move, uh -huh. you need to compute to the end. And so it's a, the state and action is a very large number, right? Yes, yes. This is a super simple game. Actually, in gym, you can explore. There are many simple games that you can play. Some of the game are more complicated, a lot complicated than others. Uh, that there are some, though know, the, uh, the the video games. Uh, there's one uh, uh, ping pong game that is a lot harder. Actually, you know, you, it, 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 it takes. Uh, you, you have to take. Uh, some computer vision models into account as well, because you, know, you are going to have uh, a ball that's jumping across the screen and you have uh, a, a, a plank that you try to catch the ball to reflect the ball into the, uh, into the wall. So the, the game is to play as long as possible without dropping the ball. And that one is quite complicated. Um, so, uh, and this game, you can make it complicated when you set uh, the uh, you either increase the map size. So here is a small map size. You can make the size really big, right? Uh, and you can make it slippery. Making it slippery make the game a lot harder to play because if you, for example, if you stay, uh, the agent stay here, although you want to go this direction, it may not. It may have a, a third probability of going here and drop into the hole, right? So uh, even for human being, if you add this complexity, it's very hard for us to figure out the best solution, right? Uh, so you no, know, the game won't be as easy anymore. So even as a simple game as this, trying to get the optimal results is pretty hard. And not to say you now our human being living in this world with very sparse signals and a lot of inconsistent in signals, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, to explore. If you want to play, you, know, you can very much use the template I have to play many other games uh, in uh, in gym. I think it's uh, it gives us a lot of food for thoughts, not only algorithmically, but also probably a reflection of the complexity in our life. And we start to appreciate the opportunities uh, that we have um, you know, uh, as we walk along the road. Great. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, I have another question about the Q-learning equation that the, we, calculate the current estimate of action value based on the action value plus the, uh, the I think future. I, yeah. it's the future, it's the uh, obtained from the next state. Right. But the next state is obtained from the next, next state. Yes. So it's actually calculate, so it will calculate from the goal and then calculate back. Exactly, yeah. That's exactly how it works. So think about the, the reward, right? Now we have 16 states and only you reach the, the 16th state, which is the goal that you get a reward of one, right? Uh, so the problem is the reward is very sparse, right? It's like playing chess, you can play a hundred moves, 200 moves without winning the game, right? 
in this case, no, because the reward is is scarce, it's very hard to tell the the what action to take, right? Because you no, know, most of the state would not would have a reward of zero, right? So really, the beauty of Q Q table is to be able to tell you uh, the value associated with each state, although the reward is far away uh, from from it. So through you can think of this as part of the back propagation, although not the same back propagation in deep learning, but it's kind of back propagation that we, we work backwards, right? Uh, we we uh, you know you should actually start with one. Let me let me show. Uh, I know it's a little bit uh, out of time, but if you uh, stick with me for one minute, uh, I'll show you. Actually, the calculation start from the very end. You know, consider that you are here, okay? Um, that you are approaching this 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 reward and then you can start to calculate well what is what is the next uh, reward right and then starting from there you calculate uh the uh value of moving to the right uh uh versus the value of moving to the left or moving to to the top right uh and then being able to to calculate uh the the queues uh, Q, uh, the, the Q value here, right? And then you move another. If you know the value here, you can calculate the value here, right? So basically, you 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 through the back propagation, you can calculate the values for each uh, of the uh, of the cells. Okay. Yeah, great. Any other question? Okay, so I apologize. We are over time for six minutes, but hopefully this is worth your time. Um, and uh, we'll see each other in two weeks. And Yu is going to update the today's presentation and uh, the file to the GitHub. Okay. So see you everyone in two weeks. Bye. See you. Thank you. Bye, Professor. Thank you.